Hi, everyone, and welcome to another massive episode of the Altcoin Bible. As always, I love bringing you these episodes where we can have a, a deeper dive into the charts and also look at a high level about uh, what we're actually seeing uh, in the current chart and where we see it going forward. And I also like to bring a bit of context into it as well. So I'm actually going to share an extra chart today as well to give you an idea about what uh, crypto in absolute free fall looks like versus a crypto that is just having a little bit of a breakdown, let's say in a danger zone area. So let's crack straight in. Um, and I want to start with uh, my wonder watch this week. It's Matisse. So uh, people watching this might be familiar with Matisse, but it's a, a layer two uh, protocol that is doing very, very well. It's actually the, the fastest layer two on the market and also the cheapest. Uh, so that has a, a lot of positives going for it, obviously, especially when you look at Ethereum not being able to scale. And it had a tremendous run up uh, into last year when we really found a new all time high at about 300 from um, you know a fair way off that. I think we were down in single digits for a while. Yeah, there we go, $3 all the way up to an all-time high of about 325. Since then, like the broader crypto market has absolutely been crunched. And now where we are today, I just want to have a look at our um, our highlights from last week, where we said this is actually one to watch and where it was going to go. And I just want to recap what happened and what we said. And you can sort of see how the conclusion came to that point and, and then how the, the crypto actually itself uh, roared to life and did what we thought it might. So uh, one to watch for a doubling to the 50 moving average. So if we just have a look here, obviously these web episodes come out on a Wednesday. So uh, if we go back maybe seven days, we're around the 21 uh, not the 21 one, is that there? The 50, no, excuse me, it is the 21. So the, the blue here is the 21 uh, moving average there. For me, getting on top of that and using it as support, as you can see it did here, that was a reasonably strong signal for me, especially in the short term, that uh, Matisse should see a little bit of upside here if it can hold its position, and it absolutely did. It was in a beautiful uh, movement here where it was finding those, those higher highs and higher lows. You can see uh, this crypto just moving up to test the underside of this blue line here. Then we had a pullback, but this low is higher than that last low, so that's all nice. Then we had the bust up, needed to really break through, and it did. Love that, coming back down, testing that line. And I think we said here as well, uh, one to watch for a doubling with the 50 moving average. So the 50 moving average at the time was this yellow line, and obviously price was back down in this area here. But this is how price gravitates towards these moving averages. It uses them as a bit of a support and resistance, it wants to retest them, it's where a lot of traders have their buy and sell orders. Uh, planted. It really is a helpful gauge of where the crypto goes. And what happened, it bounced, well, bounced, it rammed right into it, came back down, uh, and but then also roared up to about $30. So it got even higher than I thought it might. Uh, and if you look at fundamentally why this happened, there was a listing of this particular crypto on Coinbase. So that is usually a pretty big driver. Now in bear markets, it's not so much. And Coinbase listings used to, especially in 2017, it used to have an enormous impact on crypto token. You could see it go from anywhere between 100% you know, up to maybe even 1,000% up they've got listed on Coinbase. It used to be a really big thing, but in this environment, Coinbase One isn't a very big uh, exchange anymore when you're comparing to like Binance, FTX, all that. Uh, but if you're looking here, uh, this really was a short-term pump and then a bit of a dump. So that's generally what happens in these bearish phases of the market. Any significant pumps get sold into quite heavily because it is a bear market. There's not a lot of new capital in the ecosystem. So any, again, large moves are coming from capital that's generally already in the ecosystem. So the overall crypto ecosystem is just searching, hunting around, looking for short-term plays. Then you see a lot of capital jump in, they'll write it up and then sell off. And then we will you know, obviously reevaluate and go from there. But it's very interesting that Matisse got up to about $30 uh, and when did it get down? So it was 14 at one stage. So a nice little doubling there, those higher lows uh, and higher highs really coming into play. And it's still my one to watch because to be honest, uh, it's one of the cryptos that has had a significant move um, from the low. Let's just have a look there. So 100% off the low, obviously, but from last week, since we were plotting it, let's say it's around there, about 62% up. So that is a really significant and nice move within a week. So that's fantastic. So a bit of short-term TA um, did work out there. But again, we did have a fundamental catalyst that obviously helped it along the way. Uh, and this high low structure hopefully does continue. Uh, if you can see here, this trend just beautifully up like that. Now, this will eventually break and then you will reevaluate. But if Matisse can hold here, on top of this huge volume profile, it actually has a fairly decent base. And even before this move through here, this was beginning to look better uh, simply because, uh, well, not simply because a few other factors as well, but the RSI, so the strength index of bulls and bears, so the 
that momentum pressure, you can just see bulls just constantly gaining. So buyers gaining up on sellers. So uh, even in this zone here, uh, when we were just consistently grinding lower, we had a bit of a divergence here where buyers were gaining strength while price was actually still selling off. So eventually the theory is anyway, that buyers will get on top of sellers if sellers weaken at any point and they did. And since then we've had a nice little reversal around. Whether this spells, uh, you know, the next little phase up in Matisse, I'm not sure, um, but uh, you know, it's as good a base as any. And if we just go out to the weekly, you can just see here, it's looking like it's ready to find itself within this range now and just go sideways for a bit. Doesn't mean that the, the lows down here are you know, fully um, explored. We may come up here, grind a bit sideways and come back down for another retest. But to me, this looks like a fairly conclusive retracement. And it's uh, from the highs, it's down about 95%. That's generally what you do see in bear market lows. Uh, and now we're probably going to grind in this range for a little while. That's what I foresee. Uh, but so far, this is a really positive start. You know, a couple of green candles and this doesn't look that great already at the start of this week, still four days to go. There's the big sell-off that's happened there. This could, of course, keep going down. But uh, overall, I think this is a positive start for Matisse. Okay, uh, let's move on over to Ethereum because this was actually my danger zone and I wanted to use Ethereum just because it's a big crypto uh, as opposed to a smaller crypto and I've chosen a, another crypto next which I want to show you what a, a really, really horrible chart looks like. And why I say this Ethereum chart isn't that bad, I mean, it's Ethereum. It's, it's the second most highest liquid crypto out there uh, and it's, it's had a bit of a bounce and now it's going to work itself out to try and go higher. But what has happened, if you look here, it's found itself in a uh, ascending wedge. So this wedge is generally a bearish formation. Uh, and when it does break to the downside, it tries to resolve itself in these sort of areas. So if we just overlay the Fibonacci retracement, and I think I did this on Monday in my Monday market update, but it comes down, generally retraced to about 0.618, uh, 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. This is just a tool that shows you mathematical levels and generally traders. And uh, it's strange how markets do adhere to mathematical levels. It is crazy. If you go out to the weekly on a lot of crypto, especially Bitcoin on this previous retracement, you'd be surprised how often it does come back to the 0.786 and Bitcoin has. Um, but yes, Ethereum here, it's definitely trying to work itself out of this area, uh, but since it's broken down from this wedge, it will come back down into you know these sort of areas. But uh, what I wanted to show you here was this support level, uh, which is broken down, but it's holding because of this amount of volume that's found itself here. So a lot of people are bidding in this area, thinking that this will be sticky, and it is. Uh, you know, slowly but surely, the bulls are gaining momentum in this area. Uh, but overall, this doesn't look overly flash uh, for the short term. It's run into the 21 uh, moving average here, found the big resistance of this blue line here, run into it, been sold off instantly. It's come back down here. It needs to gain a bit of strength to go much higher and it needs to find you know, willing buyers that want to come in and push this higher. So I'm just not sure whether that's happening right now. But on the flip side, if it can get on top of, say, these volume bars over here and you know, maybe start climbing above 1,200, uh, then that 50 moving average up here is definitely on the cards because there's a big gap in volume up on the right here and price generally screams higher if it can get into those gaps. It's also on the flip side too. If Ethereum was based up here uh, and it dropped beneath this level like it did over here, you can see there, as soon as it got beneath this level here, crush, absolutely flattened to the downside. And we had a bit of more of extreme crush because of the uh, liquidations of some brokerage firms uh, and whatnot. But Ethereum here, short term is very is bearish moving into this range. Uh, but overall, if we go out to the weekly for Ethereum, we are absolutely in this range. And like Bitcoin, Ethereum is trying to contend with, and there's a bit of color and noise on this chart, just try and tune that out. But if you look at this long-term moving average, so this, this say this red line just for, for now, is the 200 weekly moving average. Like Bitcoin, it is hugely contextual. So in uh, you know, bear markets, it either gets tested or goes just below it. Uh, it is generally the floor uh, in Bitcoin and Ethereum for bear markets. So we're in there now. What Ethereum has to do is get back above this red line uh, and use it as support. So get back on top of it. Right now, unfortunately, and the same is for Bitcoin, which is a bit lower, uh, it's now running back into it and finding it as resistance, not support. So it has to reclaim it, get on top. And then we can start talking about, you know, bottoms forming and recoveries. But right now it's, it's very hard to get bullish. Uh, sorry, it's very, yes, it's very hard to get bullish, sorry, on any of these charts really, if they're beneath these long-term moving averages. So we're really looking for the market to find a bit of a floor, slowly gain a bit of confidence and start that new trend, get above these old long-term moving averages 
and we can start talking again. Uh, again, on the flip side as well, I mean, Ethereum's never been this oversold on the weekly. I know Bitcoin is, I assume Ethereum is as well. It looks like it is, especially on this chart. On Bitstamp, so yeah, keep that in mind. But for me, this is my danger zone. It's absolutely risking going down to about 850 or below a uh, thousand. So far, Bitcoin's holding 20,000, Ethereum is holding 1,000, you know, okay. The longer it hangs around these areas, the more chance it is going to drop. So uh, just keep that in mind. You might think, okay, well, 20,000, 1,000 is holding on both of these cryptos, happy days, slowly build out of this, but it's not necessarily the case. The more times it penetrates it or hits it, it's eating away at those buyers just sitting there looking to scoop up a bargain. All right, now I want to show you a crypto that just looks abysmal. Uh, and this is, the, let's just say, the true danger zone here. This is RFOX. Uh, we once had RFOX, I believe, in our newsletter about metaverses when it was, um, you know, really cracking on. Still fairly popular crypto and probably has a very bright future. But this is what I, a, a crypto that's just had the floor fallen out from under it. And it is truly seeking that final bottom. Um, but it is just doesn't look near it just yet. I mean, the RSI is telling a certain story. It's got a nice double bottom here on the um, on the RSI in, in truly oversold territory. But, you know, these RSIs are telling you something. It tells you that sellers and bears are totally in control and it will take something pretty incredible for it to turn around. However, when it is in these areas, it doesn't mean that it's going to reverse, but it means it is closer to reversing than not, if that makes sense. So, uh, but just have a look here at this vicious trend from the highs. So you can see here, constantly this price is failing under this line I've just drawn there, uh, can't go any higher. That's a clear downtrend. Then we had a break of that trend and we got on top of this, this new line. Then we broke that uptrend that was very short and fleeting. This was our, this area here was our big floor area, this yellow line based on this such huge volume profile. When a crypto breaks these key areas that has never been breached before, you can see here even in 2021, uh, didn't break it even then. Uh, over here and it just once it breaks it just tears downwards you see this big volume gap tears downwards where are we now we are in this huge downtrend with no end in sight uh, you'd be a brave person you know accumulating aggressively in these areas I mean dollar cost averaging is probably your best bet here if you're keen on RFOX in the future uh, and just averaging your price down uh, but to me looking at the charts here this looks pretty abysmal uh, so you, you really want this price to, to suddenly find a floor here let's just say uh, at, the, at this volume support and then slowly break through and, and just find a bit of a, a change in direction, a change in demand. Because on the weekly, uh, I mean, it, it really illustrates how bad that, that is. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven red uh, red candles. So it's, it's down here, seller candles in this entire phase downwards with just two little green candles holding up the fort uh, here and there, trying to change the trend, but it just gets overwhelmed and really nothing to write home about in the RSI on the weekly either. So uh, yeah, that is what a really bad chart looks like and you don't really want to be stepping in front of a freight train until you see generally the market turn over. All right, so Cherry Right this week is GMT. Uh, you can look into it. It's a fairly interesting cryptocurrency. Uh, if you look and do your fundamental analysis, it's based on step counting and you uh, can earn an income from step counting pretty wild. Uh, but if we just look at the, the pure chart, this uh, this is looking really promising uh, for me. You've got that grinding lower downtrend that looks to have double bottom to you. So one and two, uh, really nice on this key support level. And this is a fairly young crypto, so it doesn't have much, uh, if going back, doesn't have much data uh, for you to really base too much on support level. So you really have to go, well, this is only you know, early April. But right now, this looks like it wants to just continually move higher. Uh, however, just running into a bit of a roadblock here at that 50 moving average. Uh, but so far, this is a fairly nice little pullback, little pit stop before it might go higher. It's above the volume support. So there's not much in this area. It, if it wants to, it can really scream higher, uh, you know, back to $1.60 if it wanted to. But I think a dollar is going to be contextually quite strong for it to break. And it's confluent with this 50 moving average. If it breaks that level with uh, conviction, then yeah, it's going to be off to the race. It's going a bit higher. Uh, but just look at the, the overall structure of what GMT is trying to do here. So you've got this low here, the second low here, then it makes this little high here, then it has a little pullback, then a new higher high, then this higher low. So the low is higher than this previous one, breaks up again, gets above the 21. So a lot of things are starting to add up that the momentum is gaining. And then it's come back to test of support. It's got on top of this key horizontal, another great sign, burst up, retest to support, fantastic. Uh, goes up, has a, a bit of a, a blow off little area, 
as another pullback. But this low here is higher than these previous lows before that pump. So you can just see that that is continuously grinding up like a staircase. Generally, markets move up in a staircase, come down in an elevator. So just remember that. I don't know how long this will go, and I'm not sure if there's a fundamental reason for why it's going up, but it's certainly cherry ripe for me to have more upside as well. Bulls clearly gaining strength on the uh, on the RSI there. Sellers not doing too much to stop this. Volume profile looks really nice. So that's GMT. I think that's what you really want to look at. So yeah, I hope everyone's enjoyed uh, this episode of me talking through the charts. If you've got any questions, uh, leave them for me below and I'll be happy to answer. And uh, yeah, hope you have a wonderful day. We'll catch you again uh, next week. Ta. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.